So here's a question before we jump into today's lecture. If you find yourself, when you are in a sales conversation, feeling salesy, feeling pushy, feeling slimy, and you're saying to yourself, man, this just doesn't feel like me, then in this video, I'm going to spend some time going extremely deep on what you can do about it because what's being taught right now, and I pay attention in the sales training space, is still this objection framework and this script and this tactic. All of these things that when you do them, A, you don't feel like yourself, and B, they don't work. When you do it, the prospects push back. When you do it, you know you're running a play on the prospect and the prospect knows it. And all that happens when we do things like that is raise the prospect's resistance even more. They become more resistant and they retract even more because these plays that are being taught out there in the sales training space are just that. They're plays. There's something you do to someone. And we know that sales isn't something you do to someone. Sales is something you do with and for someone. And so the answer to this is becoming a trusted advisor. Now, before you say, oh, I've heard all that before, Brandon, let me get through this video to share with you what it means to be a trusted advisor. And I promise you this, that if you can have the patience and the focus to get through this video and pay attention because you're here anyways, you're going, it will change how you sell for the rest of your life. And not only does it change the way you sell, but you will get more clients, more clients will be happy that they ended up doing business with you You'll get more referrals. You'll make a lot more money. And the most important thing, you will feel good about it. So let's get into this today. So if you look on screen right now, this is the traditional sales model. So we've got the salesperson. We've got the prospect. Everything that's being taught, the salesperson is taught on how to push the prospect towards making the sale, right? Well, every time we push, the prospect does what? They push right back. And the more pressure you push, the more you push them off the edge towards the sale, the more reactance and the more resistance you get in return. This is the traditional selling model. This is everything that's being taught, every book, everything I've seen out there is putting the salesperson in a position to have a bias towards making the sale. What can I do? What can I say? What questions do I need to ask that will lead me closer to closing the business? And you're saying, yeah, Brandon, what's the problem with that? Well, we're going to get into it. At the end of this video, you're going to have what I believe to be a massive, massive breakthrough. Here's the reverse selling model. This is what I coach to. This is what I believe. This is the methodology of selling that I've created that I think serves both salesperson and prospect better. So if you look at the screen, I drew this image. The image probably isn't the best, but it's what I think about when I think about the reverse selling methodology. This is kind of like what my brain thinks about, is the salesperson not only doesn't have a bias towards making the sale, but actually gently walks away from the sale, gently pushes the prospect away towards not doing the sale. And it's the prospect that ends up doing all the selling. It's the prospect that ends up doing all the pushing. And what ends up happening is the it's called a pulling technique that the prospect then pulls you back into the sale because of how we communicate, how we serve them. Our approach to selling is so 
different that the prospect ends up doing all of the convincing and we stay out of it. And I'm going to show you in this video literally how to do it. So let's just define for the sake of this video, what is a trusted advisor? This is my definition. Someone who is highly sought after from those in need of valuable counsel to make great decisions. Somebody who's highly sought after from those people in need of valuable counsel to make a great decision. This is what I believe it is to be a trusted advisor. The main characteristic of that of a trusted advisor is this. It's one who communicates the truth without a bias towards self-interest. So whatever the truth is, whatever needs to be said, they say it without the bias towards serving themselves. It's just the truth. The main characteristic on the opposite of a needy salesperson is that of someone who only communicates with a bias towards self-interest. Convincing, pitching, selling, overcoming objections, scripting, all of these things are designed to do just that. Have a bias towards getting the prospects to buy your thing, to say yes to your thing. And I'm going to give the context in this video for real estate agents because that is the industry that I serve. So the trusted advisor scorecard, okay? This is the first time I'm ever introducing the audience here on the podcast and on YouTube to this scorecard. This is something typically I do with real estate agents that I coach one-on-one. -on -one. So here's how it works. You're going to be presented with a situation in this video in just a second. And then you're going to choose from one of two answers on how you would respond. Now, certainly it's probably not the exact words, but the approach, you can pick one or the other. And then at the end, you're going to add up your score to determine how strong your trusted advisor status is or is not. And here's the thing. Being a trusted advisor is not something you get to decide. Being a trusted advisor is how others perceive you. So you don't get to decide, yes, Brandon, I'm a trusted advisor to my clients. Well, what do they think? What is their perception? And their actions speak louder than words. Do you have a lot of prospects who don't commit to you? Do you have a lot of prospects that don't refer you clients that come back and do business with you again? Do you have a lot of prospects who tell you, I need to think about it, I need to think it over, and then they go into the witness protection program and never call you again? Well, that would suggest otherwise. So if you look back on the screen, and for those of you listening to the podcast, I'm going to articulate this verbally so you can understand what we're doing. The trusted advisor scorecard. This is how you're being perceived by other people. So when you communicate, you're either falling on one side or the other. One side is perceived to be in your own self-interest. So when you communicate, what you say, what you, uh, uh, the words you choose, the questions you ask, the statements you use, the perception is that those things are being said to serve your own self-interest. That's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is when you communicate, the perception is that you speak of the interest of the prospect, that you ask questions that are of their interest that maybe they aren't even thinking about themselves. That is what's being perceived. In other words, on the other end of the spectrum, being a trusted advisor is one who is perceived to speak against her own interest in the interest of others. So when you speak against your self-interest or for your self-interest, you come across very salesy, which then, of course, raises sales resistance. It raises psychological reactance. When you speak 
against your own interests and putting the interest of others before your own, it helps to build trust. It gives you credibility. So when you go through each one of these scenarios, I'm going to walk you through and, and how we score this is based on how you are being perceived by the prospect. So let's get started. Here's situation number one. The seller says, I'm thinking about moving. Is now a good time? This is the question they ask. Option A, you could say something like this. Well, listen, it's a tough time. The market, it's, it's, it, it's tough to time the market. I'm sorry. So option A is it's tough to time the market. So if you're going to sell, we should probably get started right away. That's the first approach. So the seller says, hey, listen, I'm thinking about moving. Is now a good time? Option A is, listen, it's, it's hard. It's almost impossible to time the market. But if you're considering making a move, I mean, we should probably meet and start working on that process. There's a lot to do here. We should probably get started right away. That's one approach. Option B is approaching that by saying something like, well, Mrs. Seller, what's wrong with the house you're in now? Seems like a perfectly fine home. Why go through the headache of selling? Why, what's, why not just stay there? So that'd be the other option. So if you choose option A or op, the first option, give yourself one point. Situation number two. Seller says, listen, other agents are willing to discount their commission for 5%. Can you match that? Option A, one way to approach it, you could say, well, listen, if you're concerned with how much your agent gets paid, have you considered hiring one of those companies that just charge a flat $99? I mean, if your concern is to find an agent who charges the least amount of money, there's a lot of agents out there that charge a lot less than 5%. Have you considered one of those? Option B, I don't discount my commission the same way you probably wouldn't work for your employer for a discount, right? That's option B. So if you choose... If you chose option B in this case, you're going to give yourself one point. Situation three, seller says, I think we can get at least another $25,000 for the home. Can we list it a little bit higher than what you're suggesting? Option A would be an agent who responds this way. Well, let me ask you this. If the home sits on the market for a long time, at that price and buyers end up only giving you offers that are 50 or $60,000 or less, how will you feel? So listen, certainly we can list the property for whatever you want. If it sits on the market as a result and you end up getting low ball offers that are a lot less than what you hope for, how are you going to feel? Option B is going to be yes, no problem. I mean, I can get you that price for sure. So if you chose option B, give yourself one point. Situation number four. The seller says, why should I hire you? Option A, you say, well, listen, great question. And the reason is because I give great service. I lived in the area all my life. And no one is going to work harder for you than I will. That's a promise. Option B, after the seller says, listen, Mr. Agent, you know, there's a lot of agents out there. Why should I hire you? Option B is to respond with something like this. Well, to be fair, I'm not sure you should. You see, I'll shoot you straight. I'm not the agent for everyone. So if you chose option A and that approach, which is fine, Give yourself one point. Let's get into situation number five, which is the last one. Seller, we're thinking about hiring a different agent. The seller says that to you. Option A, you could say something like, listen, I totally understand. I mean, you deserve a lot better. What day can we meet? And then the other approach would be when the seller says, hey, listen, we're thinking about hiring a different agent. You say, 
Well, unfortunately, I hear that a lot. I mean, have you tried talking to your current agent about why you're not happy? And so in this case, if you chose option A, give yourself one point. So let's add it up. Let's add up the score. Let's look at this and say, okay, well, if you have five out of five, if you got a point on every situation, the perception is that you come across as very needy, very desperate, very salesy, and one who is only concerned is themselves. That's the way in which you're being perceived. If you scored four out of five, it's often that you speak with commission breath. So you speak in terms of your own self-interest in getting money from people. If you scored three out of five, the prospects perceive you as someone who cares, but at times comes across a little pushy, a little salesy. If you score two out of five, prospects trust you. If you scored one out of five, prospects start to value you. And if you scored zero out of five, this is when you become the trusted advisor that prospects do business with every time. They come back and do business with you again in the future and they refer everyone they know to you because of the value, the trust, the rapport, and how much respect they have for you. And so let's, if we look at this and we go back to these situations and we kind of unpack them for just a second, we start to say, okay, let's look at situation number five. The seller says, listen, we're thinking about hiring a different agent. Of course, the needy, desperate salesperson jumps all over that, like the little boy on prom night. Well, I'm different. I totally get it. You deserve better for that. You know, why don't we get why don't we get together and meet? Well, whose interest is that speaking in? It's you, it's the agents. They see a little sign of weakness. They see a little pain, and they jump all over the opportunity. And the prospect says, "Well, of course you're jumping all over that. Now I shouldn't have told you the truth." Of course you want to meet. Of course you're coming across like you care that I had this tough situation with my agent. Where the trusted advisor doesn't speak for her own interest. She just speaks the truth. The truth is, if you had a bad experience with your agent, have you, I mean, have you had that conversation? And so only somebody who is has the approach or has the confidence to speak in terms of this is just the truth. It isn't that we're trying to talk the person out of doing business with us. It's speaking in a, in a neutral communication pattern where one's perception is not that we're just out for ourselves, but we're out for what is right, not who is right. Let's look at situation number four. Seller says, well, why should I hire you? The amateur, untrained salesperson, the person who has low value status, the needy, the desperate one, takes the bait every single time. It's because of this, it's because of this, it's because of this, it's because of this. And isn't it fair to say that the seller on the other end of the phone or in a face-to-face -face meeting says, oh boy, here we go. It's You sound exactly like everyone else. Whereas the person who's the trusted advisor just tells the truth, which is we don't know that they should hire us. We don't know if we are the right agent for them. We haven't seen their house yet. We don't know their motivation. We don't know what the price is. We don't know the situation. We don't know their motivation. We don't know anything. So to imply out of the get-go that we should work together is the very definition of being desperate. It's like, hey, I've got this opportunity for you. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Before you even know what the opportunity is, only the desperate, needy salesperson jumps all over a potential opportunity without even knowing the details. The trusted advisor says, maybe it might make sense for us to work together, and it might not, and I'm okay either way. Situation three, listen, I think let's list the house at a higher price than what you're suggesting. The needy, desperate person who, who 
will do anything for anybody under any terms, just wants the listing. They say to themselves, well, geez, I'd rather have the listing than not have the listing. So I don't care what price it's at and I don't care what commission I have to charge to get it. I'll do it no matter what, if it means I can get my sign in the front yard. The trusted advisor says, well, wait a minute. I'm happy to do that if that's what you decide to do, Mr. Seller. But here are the downsides to doing something like that. Are you okay with that? And only the trusted advisor gives the prospects the truth, confronts them with the reality and gives people things to consider that one would perceive against their own interest. Situation two, other agents are willing to discount their commission to 5%. Can you? Well, most of the time, and I was going to put this in here, but I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Most of the time, the needy, desperate salesperson says, no problem. I can do it for four. If it means I'm going to get the deal, if it means you're going to list your house with me, I will do it at four. That's what most people say. And of whose interest is that in? Because the amateur salesperson says, well, the seller's right. If I charge less commission, that means they will net more money. That is absolutely not the, not true and not the case. Because the true professional agent not only can position the property better than that of, a, of an amateur, can negotiate better, has more buyer opportunities, can position the property better than that of a discount agent, and therefore, as a result, has a higher list to sold price ratio. It's just the facts. So that person says, when, when, when presented with the opportunity to discount their commission, they say, well, Mr. Seller, if you're concerned with how much you pay versus how much you will net, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that would do it for a lot less than 5%. Have you considered one of those? Because isn't it true that when a seller asks us to discount their commission, it isn't that they're concerned with the commission, they're concerned with what? Their net bottom line that they're going to get from the sale of the home. So we can turn that right back around and say, which of those two things are you more concerned with? And then situation number one, listen, I'm thinking about moving is now a good time. The desperate needy one is always yes. Well, yeah, now is as good a time as any. And the trusted advisor goes right back to the seller and says, well, what's wrong with the house you have now? This is There's no better question that uncovers true seller motivation than this one. You've got a perfectly fine house now. It's beautiful. I love the area. You're in a great city. You're in great schools. You only owe very little. You're at a great interest rate. Why not just stay put? And now you put the seller in a, in a position to do all the sales. You put the seller in the position to do all of the self-convincing and you stay out of it. Well, you see, Brandon, here's the thing. And they just give you all the gold. We need to move because boom, 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 boom. Versus the first one who comes across as that needy, desperate salesperson. Hopefully this makes a lot of sense. So I'll leave you with this. I know this is a lot to take in. I'm not saying or suggesting that this is an easy thing to adopt. I'm, I'm asking that you consider the way in which you communicate that is impacting the perception that you're giving off that maybe is leading people to not want to do business with you. So certainly if you would like to have a conversation about me helping you generate a multiple six figure income by becoming a dominant listing agent, I'm going to put a link for you to schedule a call right underneath this calendar. You can pick a day and time that works best for you. We can have a conversation, talk about a coaching relationship, if that is what you want, and then together decide if working together has any value for one another or not. And if not, and these videos are giving you value, then keep hanging out here. But if you want to take it to the next level, I'll invite you to schedule a call. And then our team can look forward to serving you on that coaching consultation. So listen, I appreciate your time and your attention today. I know it was a longer one. Hopefully you got a lot of takeaways. These are the types of videos that I like to make that I'll continue to make here on the channel and on the podcast. And if there are certain topics that you want me to cover at great depths like this one, just throw it in the comments. Be happy to unpack that in great detail. We'll see you guys soon.